what's going on YouTube how's everyone doing today so guys I'm finally feeling better uh, after the last month of everything that's happened to me um, with the hospital with my car with school just with everything in general I'm finally starting to feel better finally starting to get that stress off of me finally starting to get caught up in school so I am super excited to start making videos again and honestly guys if it wasn't if you if you if you guys didn't comment on my videos asking me where I was if you guys didn't comment on my videos like asking me what's been going on um checking in on me like I probably still would be making videos right now um so big shout out to everyone who commented on me who helped me out in any way possible thank you guys so much you guys you guys don't even understand how much it means to me so but yeah but anyways guys in this video we're going to be talking about how to play full AP Rengar um I made a video on this in the past in season 8 I believe and if that video is completely outdated and I've been getting comments asking me how to do it, um, what's my build path, how do I like play it. So I'm here, I'm going to be talking about all everything that you really need to know about AP Rengar and all the scalings and stuff like that as well. Now starting off we're going to go to the ruins and we're going to be talking about the ruins first. Now when we go to the ruins, I already have this page set up but I'll explain every single one. Actually I don't understand the right thing right now. Um, but pretty much whenever I play AP Rengar, I always run Domination. I think it's an amazing key for it, and the other ones don't really work out that well. Um, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, you, you might be able to use Sorcery and um, Phase Rush, but I wouldn't recommend it because you need as much damage as possible so you can get as much damage on turrets and uh, champions. So what I run always is Electrocute. Electrocute's a phenomenal keystone um, for Rengar, and the reason why I'm not saying like Dark Harvest or Predator was because I used Predator in the past. It is good, but it, uh, you had to have boots, and I don't like that. So I just don't really run it anymore because you already have enough movement speed with um, your alt anyways, so no targets can get away from you. Um, so I don't run Predator anymore, and Electrocute is just so much better. The second one that you're going to be running is Sudden Impact, kind of for obvious reasons, because every single time you jump out of a bush to leap, so you get uh, extra damage. And then Eyeball Collector. You can also run um, Zombie Ward. It's that's pretty good as well. Um, I don't run that just because I feel like Eyeball Collector is better, especially if you can get um, early kills. So that's really helpful um, later on in levels. And then last but not least, I run Ultimate Hunter, so I get my ultimate up as soon as possible, and I also get a bounty. So I think these are the best ones to run for AP Rengar. Um, and then going over into your secondary tree, you're going to be taking Sorcery. And I always run Nimbus Cloak and Celerity, and the reason why I run these two is because this gives me increased movement speed whenever I ult, which is pretty awesome with Rengar because you go invisible and your ult doesn't really do anything else. Um, so that's really good. Chase down targets really easily. And then also you get 10% more movement speed on all of your um, like movement speed bonuses or like movement speed effects on you. So whenever you ult, you get 10% increased movement speed as well. And this also gets 10% increased movement speed, so that's really good. This is like a really good combo. Um, if you don't want to run this, you want to have max damage, you can run... Uh, Nimbus Cloak and Gathering Storm, or you can run Celerity and Gathering Storm. Either one work really well, but I don't take Gathering Storm anymore because you don't necessarily need it. Um, but it's just really good to have if you feel like you need extra damage. And the last one at least, uh, you're going to run Offensive Adaptive Forest, um, Flux Adaptive Forest, and then Defensive Health. Now this could change. Now if they have like a really heavy uh, AD comp, you'd switch to Armor, or a heavy, very heavy Magic comp, you'd switch to Magic Resist. But for the most part, you're going to be taking the defensive tree in extra health, just so you can get as much health as possible, just so you can be like a glass cannon, kind of. So you have, we, you're going to have a lot of health in-game, and then um, based on level, you're getting more health, so it's just really helpful. But anyways, guys, we're going to jump right into the gameplay, and we're going to start talking about um, jungle clear, and we're going to be talking about um, how to do your full combo and the items that you'll be needing. So let me jump over right into the game real fast. Give me like one second, and your time is going to be like, 0.2 seconds but yeah <laughs> all right guys now getting into the game now I'm gonna be talking about your build path first and then we'll talk about the jungle clamp and like kind of just the overall gameplay and how I play AP Rengar um, so starting off your build path the first time you're always going to build first is your jungle item the stalkers play at 80 ability power 10% CDR the banner doesn't help you at all but it helps you with the 10% life steal on monsters and minions so you can stay, sustain in jungle better um, now the only time I don't build this item first is if I feel like um, I need more damage on my Qs early and then I would switch over to the Sheen on Lichbane and then I'll finish the item. But for the most part I always get this item first. It's the best item that you can get first because it deals the most damage early on. 
The second item that you're going to get is Lich Bane. Now, depending upon if you feel like you need to get Sheen, then before the full Runic Echo, you might already have a part of the Lich Bane. Uh, but Lich Bane is a fantastic item as well. You get 80 ability power, 7% increased movement speed, which would also help out with celerity and also help out whenever you ult. Um, you'll also get 10% uh, uh, cooldown reduction, so you're at 20% currently. And on top of that, your next auto attack deals whatever bonus damage based on your current AP. So right now it's 445. And my Q would do something like 700 damage right now. Now, the next item that I built, this is different from my old video, is Rabadon's Death Cap. The reason why I get this now is because it does a lot more damage and it helps you scale so much better. The, better, or the earlier you get it, the better. And the reason why I'm not putting it before either one of the first two is because you have to have your jungle item because it helps you out so much. And then Lich Bane's like a must. You, like, you need that also because the ability power and the extra damage on your Q whenever you leap, so you do a max damage. So Rabadon's Death Cap is a phenomenal item um, if you can get it early. The earlier you get it, the better and the better you will scale. And I'm not going to really explain this one. It's kind of self-explanatory. 120 ability power, and then it also increases your ability power by 40%. So right now, it's giving me another 203 ability power. The next item that I got, this is a completely new item. I never built this on uh, Rengar before, except for <clears throat> just recently. Um, it's super good. Hextech Proto Belt. Now, the reason why I'm trying to get this item is because it has inc uh, health, which is amazing. It has ability power, which is 60, and it also gives CDR, which is awesome. Now, on the build that I'm showing you guys, you will actually max out after the next item, and you'll go 10% over. That doesn't really matter. It's just for like the build and does best damage or most damage possible. So pretty much, I dash forward uh, as the active, and I deal upwards of 300 damage. Um, and there's a 40% CDR, so you're just increasing your ability power, doing most damage possible. I used to get, get Gunblade, but that's an extra like a thousand gold, and then the build isn't very viable because now you're wasting more time trying to build an item instead of just trying to get ahead as fast as possible. Uh, and then after Proto Belt, the next item that I'll be getting it would be Nashra's Tooth. Um, and this can change also. You can get Void Staff first or Nashra's Tooth. These last two items are kind of like your choice. Now, whenever I get behind in the game, but I'm like pretty far along my build. I almost always get Nash's Tooth. The reason is because you get attack speed. Everyone asks me why I build this item, but I'm going to explain it the best I possibly can right here. So the reason why I get Nash's Tooth is because you get attack speed. You get 80% ability power, 20% CDR, which on this the current build that I'm building doesn't help you a lot. It gives you it does give you that max 40% CDR, but at the same time, you don't necessarily need it, um, the extra cooldown reduction. But also, it gives me basic attacks to deal an extra 122 damage um, on my next hit. So basic attacks is really helpful. And on top of that, whenever I get behind, I'm not going to try to team fight. I'm going to try to split push as much as possible. Because on with Nashor's Tooth and this current build without this last item, you can take down turrets so fast. And I'll show you an example of how much damage you can do to a turret um, here in a little bit. Um, and then... Uh, the last time you're going to be getting is Void Staff, 70 ability power, and then 40% magic penetration, which is huge and helps you out so much. And then for the um, the trinket, no one does this, and I have no idea why, but for the trinket, you always need to get Farsight, and it's so good. Because if you are like behind in early levels, you can ward right here, and then it will never disappear, and then you can always come into this bush and jump over. So you, instead of wasting time walking around and clearing this camp, you can actually ward right here and then run into the bush and then jump over. So right here, I'll show you guys right here really fast. I'm just going to, let me teleport. Where is it at? So here. Just for an example, when, if, when you're clearing uh, camps, you can, well, I don't know why it switched, switched me. Um, back to that. Whoopsie, not that. Gosh dang it. Sorry, I, I don't use this uh, function very much. But you're going to get Farsight. And then whenever you come over here, whenever you use this, you can ward like that. And first off, no one's going to like really check this unless they were super far ahead. And on top of this, you can go here and then you can jump over and you can clear it like this. Which is insanely helpful and no one ever builds it. It also helps out because whenever someone's doing Dragon or Baron, you can ult and then ward the Baron when you're a distance away. So you can be over here. And you can be chilling, and you can ward here, because if you have wards up here, you don't want to walk up. And then you can ult, and then because you have vision on, you can jump over. So I, I personally think this is the best trinket you can get on Rengar, but no one gets it. Also, if there's like a Teemo, or like a Shaka, you can build um, Sweeper. And whenever you're trying to backdoor, you can switch that out for Sweeper, and that's a big key point. Um, 
And then I'll show you guys damage to turrets really fast as well while I'm up here. So let me just clear out these minions really fast. Now this isn't going to be exact because this is the first turret, but and I'm full build. But like just like watch how fast you can clear these turrets with your current build. Like it's absolutely ridiculous, and you can just destroy uh, in the game, like late game. Like you can easily out push people, and I think my game just crashed. Oh no, it just froze really bad. But like you can easily out push people. Like it's insane. Like just watch this damage right here. 700, 410, 410, 410. Like it's in, it's absolutely insane, and I don't I don't know why people don't do these build. It's ridiculous. And another item that I didn't even get was the AP item, the sorcery. So I'd even be doing more damage to the turrets later levels. But we're gonna skip that for now. We're gonna be talking about the damage of champions and your combo and what you're gonna be doing. Now a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, you don't do a lot of damage. Damage is the only thing that matters in the game. But if you think about it. You're going to be going for objectives, and you're going to be going for split push, and then when you need to, you can team fight with your team, but you never want to engage first. The biggest thing when it comes to Rengar, if you engage first, you will die so quickly. You need to make sure you engage sec like last, and you want to try to get on the back line, but you can't engage first because if you engage first, they'll just turn on you, and then you'll die, and you most likely won't even get a kill because they'll have shields and stuff. You got to do it when they're least expecting it. So for example, I'm going to be, I'm going to switch this up real fast. But for this target right here, I'm just going to show you the combo. Your combo is going to be EQWW. And if you need to go back in any part of this video, because I'm talking too fast, just skip back and go ahead or whatever you need to. But the combo is going to be EQWW and then Proto Belt at the very end. So EQWW, Proto Belt. So max damage of 268. Or, wow, 268. 2,568 damage. That is a buttload of damage. Now, you might say like, oh, well, it's only to one target, but if you think about it, whenever you use your double roar, this is an area of effect. So if they have, if someone's standing right here and a, a teammate's like right here, I don't know why I ulted right there. Let me just get out of that really fast. Um, and then let's throw up another target as well. So we're going to spawn another target dummy like next to him. And I'm just going to show you how much damage you can do to a person off to the left as well. Now, it won't be as much. And we can actually throw up another one as well. Um, and I'll just show you like the max damage you can do to uh, ch targets around them as, as well. And obviously, like I said earlier, er, earlier, um, you don't have any buffs. You don't have any dragons, no, no Baron. You don't have any champion kills. So this would go up as well. And this, I don't, I can't, I can't remember. But this might drop a little bit. I'm not 100% sure. So like, yes, you will be doing a little bit more damage if you have dragons and Baron, but not a whole lot. So the combo is E Q W W and then Proto Belt. So we're going to do my alt first, increase like movement speed and get my uh, jump and stuff. And then you're going to EQ, WW, and then Proto Belt. So we just did 2,600 damage to him, 1,500 and 1,500. So if you think about it, if this is like a mid laner and this is support, you're dealing 1,500 damage to two of them and also one-shotting someone else. And another item you can get instead of uh, Voice Staff, you can actually switch this out for a uh, Hourglass. And then deal all this damage in an hourglass, and then they can't do anything else. Like, this damage right here is absolutely bonkers. Like, like people don't un understand how much damage you can actually do. It's actually ridiculous. So, like, this is the damage you can do. You can deal twenty, almost 2,700 damage to a, um, a single target that you're trying to one-shot. And then you can also do 1,500 damage to two other targets in, this, in the process of one-shotting your first target. Like, this would one-shot... Like a, a glass cannon top or glass cannon mid, this would one shot like almost everyone, which is absolutely bonkers. Now, whenever you're doing your jungle camp, this is what we're going to talk about next is the jungle camp and the clearing of your jungle camp. So at early levels, whenever you go like one, like one to, I don't know, just starting off, I guess. You're uh, for bot side, you're always going to start red first. On top side, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because you can start red top. It's really good because you can get that early gang bot and potentially get a double kill. I usually start blue, but red is also a really, really viable start because if you start red, you can come down, uh, do your Krugs, rotate down to uh, um, Scuttle, and then get an early gang mid or get an early gang top, and then rotate back down to your bot side and then get a gang uh, bot side. And the reason why, like, if you start up here, the enemy jungler more than likely won't invade your bot side because he's already going to be top. So if he ran, if I was up here and he was already, like, his... Uh, wolves, why would he run back all the way down here when he, when I'm already walking back after a gank? 
like we would meet up in the jungle and then I would also have priority mid and priority bot side. So red buff start is really good. But for this bottom side, we're going to start red first. I'm just going to one shot everything really quickly. So you can go red and then you're going to come over to um, Krugs. And then do your Krugs. And then after Krugs, you're going to come down here to uh, um, do your Scuttle Camp. And I always stun it early because you get extra damage. Um, because in full build, it doesn't really matter. But early on, you need to get that extra damage. And then after Scuttle, you can either make a gank bot side or you can make a gank mid. I usually don't gank bot if I'm starting this side just because... More than likely, the jungler is going to be top side. He's going to notice me bot and then just rotate over to my blue and seal my blue and potentially another camp. So I don't want to get behind. So I would usually gank mid, skip my raptors, and then come straight over to this next scuttle. And the reason why you want to get both scuttles is because it gives vision for your team. It also gives you 70 gold per scuttle and they're really easy to kill. And it gives you health back. So if you're low from like you gank, that's what you would do. And then uh, you could, after this camp, you can either gank top or mid. And then you can rotate back over to your blue. Do your blue buff. Do your um, gromp if you're still healthy enough. And then after gromp, you can rotate back to your wolves. Rotate back down to here. And then try to get another gank mid. And Or you can go back on the bot side. Now I'm clearing these camps a lot faster than what you normally would at level 1. So more than likely, this camp would already be respawned. So you can actually do your wolves. And then do a full clear and then back. Or after your blue buff and this camp right here, you can back and then come back up here. And then try to get to gank mid or go back to your raptors. Um, and then go back to your krugs and then try to get to gank bot side. The earlier levels for ganking is going to be really difficult. So whenever you want to, whenever you gank on a Rengar, you want to either come up from here, tell him to push lane, and come up from a bush. Because whenever you jump out of a bush and you don't use an ability yet, your first leap will actually give you one ferocity. So when you full combo, you can actually full combo from a bush and use um, jump, EQ midair and then WW and uh, put out all your damage like that as well. Or you can EQ roar and then stun them with your E. And that's what I usually do for ganks early levels. I'll come up into a bush and then uh, jump EQ roar and then save my E. Wait for a flash. If they don't have flash, I'll throw my E at them and then stun them in place so we can do mo uh, most damage possible. But you don't want to gank if you can't really like do anything. So mid lane is super hard to gank early. Because you can't jump anywhere, so you pretty much have to have 6 if you want to get a good effective gank off mid lane. Unless they have a snare or root themselves. Now, if they don't have a snare or root, I would advise try not to gank mid and just tell them to play safe. Um, but that's just my own opinion. Now, they're overextending a lot, then obviously gank. But like if it's just a mid, like don't worry about it. Just uh, try to uh, affect other places on the map and get other teammates ahead. Um, because at more than likely, you're not going to help your team at that point. Or your mid laner. So you might as well try to help your bot and, uh, bot and top side. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's about it. If I missed anything, make sure you guys comment down in the section below because I tend to talk a little bit fast and my mind gets tripped up on stuff. So hopefully I cleared every, uh, cleared up on everything. Um, also whenever you're trying to get dragons or baron, you need to make sure you communicate, obviously. Um, and that's the reason why I said if you start red side, um, on top side, you can actually do full clear, go bot, and this will be spawn, and then you can ping uh, dragon at level four. And, uh, you can pretty much solo a dragon at level four. Um, and obviously later builds, you can solo baron and solo uh um, dragon super super easily um but yeah that's about it um thank you guys all so much for watching if i did miss anything or you want to clear up on anything or you didn't understand something leave a comment down in the section below and i will make sure to message you back as soon as possible um and make sure you guys understand exactly how to play ap rengar now my build probably will fluctuate before the next time uh i make another video like this or my ruins might change i'm not 100 sure but hopefully you guys did understand everything and you learned something today about AP Rengar and hopefully you guys try it in the future. Now if you guys are new to my channel, make sure you guys do subscribe. Also make sure you guys like this video, share it with some friends, tell them how good AP Rengar is and then show them in, by, uh, show them in your own games and prove to them how amazing you are at AP Rengar. I would love to be able to hear some of your guys' uh, criticism and some of your guys' um, like games, talk about some of your games in my chat and just see how you guys are playing on it and how well you guys are performing on AP Rengar. I love talking with everyone, so there's no downside to this. You get an awesome guide, and you get to talk to me. So, And I love interacting with new people. But anyways, guys, like I said before, if you guys are new, make sure you guys do subscribe. Also, make sure you drop a comment and like the video. But anyways, guys, thank you guys all so much for watching and sticking by my side when I needed you guys most. I love you guys all to death, and until next time.